The effect size is whether a difference is small, medium, or large. The effect size can only be calculated if there's a significant difference in the means. If there is no significant difference in the means, then there is no effect size. If the result was a failure to reject the null hypothesis, then the effect size is meaningless and should not be reported. The p-value provides information on how surprising is a result. A significant difference is n surprising. The p-value, however, does not tell one whether the difference is meaningful. For large sample sizes, small differences might be surprising, but not meaningful. Let me explain. Suppose a pharmaceutical company has a treatment that already cures a head cold in seven and a quarter days. Then they develop a new treatment that cures a head cold in seven days. Based on the p-value, the company might find that the difference is significant. The quarter-day difference, however, might not be all that meaningful to those suffering from a head cold. Now, the standard uh, deviation will be used in this, but the core to the calculation of the Cohen's effect size d will be a difference in the two means. And I'll show you how we do that from the uh, spreadsheet from the Google Sheets app. We have here a p-value that's significant. It's less than our alpha of 0 0.05. So we'll need to take the difference into two means. That will be in the numerator of the effect size. And we'll have to divide by what's called the pooled standard deviation. The pooled standard deviation will be between the 0.59 of the shade plants and the 1.10 of the sun plants. The pooled standard deviation is the most complicated formula we will tackle in this course. It starts off with a square root and then three parentheses followed by the first sample size minus one, that's the degrees of freedom of that, times the standard deviation of that sample squared. So I'll need to go ahead and get my little caret and square that plus open another parenthesis the sample size of the second sample, minus one again, close that parenthesis, uh, times, once again, the standard deviation of the shade sample, that too I'm going to square, and now I'm going to finally close the numerator, and I'm going to divide by, in the denominator, the sample size of the one sample, plus the sample size of the other sample, and this will work even if the two are not equal, closing the denominator, and you've probably lost track, but I've got one more open, that's the square root. Let's see if I've got there. Now, this is a number you'll want to check to see if you're likely to be correct. The number must be between the two standard deviations, between these two numbers that you see here, the 1.1, and the 0.59. If your pooled standard deviation is not between your two standard deviations, you have made an error. It must be between them. Essentially, it's a weighted average, but it's an average using a Pythagorean formula. We're adding a squared plus b squared and then taking the square root and we're weighting it by the sample size. That's what's really happening here. So 0.88 is the uh, pooled standard deviation. That's not the effect size. The effect size, then, is the difference in the two means, the 3.66 mean there, minus the 2.45 mean. Notice my parentheses, quantity, divided by that pulled standard deviation. That's the Cohen effect size D. And that's 1.37. And there's in the book, and here on this spreadsheet, a table that tells us whether an effect is small, medium, large, very large, or huge. In this case, it's a very large effect size. We have here a 1.37. That's a very large effect size. We don't just have a significant difference. We have a very large effect size. There is a large difference between these uh, two values. It might not look large, but the statistics assures us that this is a very large effect between the two. Uh, and so the uh, effect size can tell us, in some sense, how, uh, how important, uh, if you will, that difference is. Is it a rather meaningless difference, or is it, does it have a large effect on the system? And this is a large effect we're seeing 
between the leaves for the plants in shade and the plants in the sun. The sunny plants not only have statistically significantly larger leaves, but there is a very large effect size. Whenever we cite a p-value in this modern era, most publications will require you to go on to report the effect size. Is it a large effect, medium effect, or small effect? And you'll need a table, as you see here, to help you figure out what your, how big your effect size is. Uh, these values aren't quite set in stone. They may vary some with different fields, but this is uh, a pretty uh, a good starting place, and certainly everything we do in this course will follow this. Um, uh, there's some this debate probably of whether an effect size below 0.02 is any actual effect. You can get a significant p-value but have no real effect occurring between two. This is because large sample sizes can reduce your p-value. So that's the effect size, and that wraps up the core material for a basic introductory statistics course. You can calculate some basic statistics, such as sample sizes, means and standard deviations, run some regressions, and do some confidence intervals, hypothesis tests, and even uh, work out p-values and some effect sizes for two independent samples. Uh,